I wanted to talk about this one. This is a pretty interesting topic to speak about here. This is another clip from the DVS interview, DVS one interview that I mentioned in a podcast the other day. And this one is specifically him kind of um, sharing his thoughts on the need for local DJs, resident DJs in the face of the pandemic, right? Or in light or because of the pandemic, because, of, yeah, because of the pandemic. I've, I've been on this channel plenty of times moaning at the fact that for the most part, we don't really have a cohesive, I say cohesive, we don't really have any sort of residency culture here in the uk for the most part maybe some cities or towns outside of uk might have them but in london especially they've always kind of focused on big name djs from you know markets outside of the uk to come in and sell tickets and fill spaces or fill clubs whatnot and then the resident dj who would wouldn't be sometimes listed on the flipping flyer would just be the person that will do the opening um sets or the closing sets right when literally everyone left because they went to see the peak set at between one to two or whatnot so there was never really an kind of an infrastructure in place to cultivate or build the careers of these DJs to a point where they could sometimes maybe get the opportunity to play those headlining slots too in case something went wrong or just for a little bit of a refresh to break up the monotony of having the same old big ticket people playing because you know as great as it is to live in London and have a really vibrant clubbing scene it does get a bit stale it does get a bit repetitive seeing the same you know 10 20 people playing in the same clubs rotating every single weekend or every single month you just want to see some new fresh talent but obviously in the last few years there's been a real kind of I feel like renaissance in people especially younger kids deciding to throw all these different types of club nights from the infernos to the gutterings to the pussy palaces to the origins there's all these really cool club nights happening in different locations all over london that are really geared towards promoting and maybe bringing in new especially even orange is a good example origins has a lot of really big name djs playing i think the re the new one coming up is going to be like dr rubenstein sam freddie k but they always pepper those lineups with residents too to do the opening sets or sometimes do the closing sets so you get a good mixture but i feel like other places just haven't done that at all and ironically enough the pandemic forced most of these clubs that were resistant or hesitant or unwilling to have resident djs to basically hire them or put in some sort of program because for the foreseeable future the ability to move freely around europe or even to come to the uk isn't going to be the same as it was pre-pandemic so they have to do something and because you know there's less attendance now these clubs too they can maybe risk a little bit more because they don't really have to try and fill it up or to try and get those crazy Ricardo Villalobos numbers because no one's really getting those numbers anymore. No nights are really selling out as well as they were pre-pandemic. I've kind of always said, I feel like we took advantage or no, I feel like in general, people within the hospitality, oh, yeah, people within the nightlife scene in general, operators, people that own clubs, people that program club nights people that throw on events DJs themselves I think we all um, took for granted the kind of general consumer the average everyday punter who maybe goes out once a month once every two months and those people I feel like were the necessary part of clubbing scene here in the UK they filled out a lot of these venues and then especially when you add on top of those people tourists as well coming in and without them now we've seen and clubs for the most part mostly em not also empty but not as full as they once were which is a good thing because it means everyone that's going out is probably on about the music but in general because of that lack of kind of capacity and lack of fullness i feel like clubs in general are willing to take more chances because it's not as if you're going to get back it out anyway even if you do big book doctor sorry even if you do book um dj harvey it's not like you're going to fill it out there's still kind of the opportunity to maybe try some new things so yeah uh what's his face devious one spoke about it here on this clip i'm going to quickly get it up on here so you can see i think it's like 1103 it speaks about it Let's get it up on there quickly. No, there, there, there. Okay, it's about here. So this is Devious One talking about the need for local DJs and residency culture and stuff. You know, one of the first things I said in the in the beginning of the pandemic uh, for our, our friend Steve in Minneapolis, even was um, 
I did this interview with him and I said, I really hope that one thing that comes from the pandemic is that we find more amazing locals and local scenes and build local scenes. As much as I love being a headliner and I love being a guest and I love being booked to come places like this, I really wish you guys would have absolutely success without me. You know, like have 500 or a thousand people come to every event you do, even if it's just locals, because to me that would be amazing. And like that's how Minneapolis actually survives and what makes my hometown work. We don't need guests. We can get three to 500 people to come to any techno show just with locals. And I think that's something special. And the world now with like, with how popular techno and house is, in bigger cities, promoters get stuck competing with, I, we have to book a guest because this promoter books a guest and the crowds don't pay attention. But I, I hope, I hope with some of the downtime that Europe is having, that other cities can grow some attention for themselves. Yeah. I made it back. Well, and I think we are definitely seeing that. We're definitely seeing uh, a renaissance or a re-emergence of residency culture here in the UK. I think, like I mentioned, there's so many great alternative nights that aren't essentially catered towards kind of mainstream audiences that are really catered towards very specific niches from the crossbreeds of the world to the infernos of the world. They really speak to a particular crowd and people are eating it up, literally eating it up. And the good thing as well that I like about it too is that these place these nights or these kind of you know experiences that you go to they aren't just kind of relegated to like dingy warehouse spaces in the middle of nowhere they're putting these parties on in the same venues that you go to see your big ticket djs at e1 the fabrics the folds the corsica studios all these kind of established venues in london that usually host all the biggest DJs in the world are also hosting these really avant-garde forward-thinking club nights that are really pushing the kind of boundaries of what a club night is meant to be and it's great to see but it needs to be more like myself you know being a dj myself having been doing it for what 10 plus years now putting on my own nights and stuff and now kind of focusing more on trying to build up my sort of dj career i've noticed that unfortunately the only way for me to kind of get better and to be able to progress my career forward is by give but get be given a chance to play in those kind of spots or in those kind of places in those kind of clubs that i mentioned as a resident to basically fill in some spots here and there when bigger people come in the hope that maybe i can catch the attention of somebody a promoter somebody doing another an event a booking agency whatever that would then kind of take me on to bigger and better things in terms of maybe progressing my career but without that it's literally impossible to kind of progress your career unless you want to do the cheat way which is basically throw your own party and book yourself but again just to have a career as a dj you have to book your, you know you have to kind of make your own party um try and see if that works promoting a party is very very difficult especially nowadays with the abundance of events on there's no guarantee of events going to be a success but again there's no guarantee you're going to be a success in the residency program but it does it's kind of like a weird school education that you do get in i, I don't know it's, a, it's an unfortunate thing because there is no perfect solution right the truth of the matter is there's way more djs in london you know per square inch than there are probably clubs right there's just too many and there's not enough kind of spaces to go around cool and then the other thing also is that does the does the the are the other cold heart reality of it are the customers or the punters really open and ready and receptive to just going out randomly to night tales and just seeing who's playing there or are they only going there specifically after 9 p.m because a certain dj is playing I don't really know i think for as much as people like to say let's promote underground artists i don't think customers are really ready for really ready to kind of commit to giving up a weekend or a day a night to just a random person they've never heard because it's too expensive to go out basically there's you know maybe that's the reason why clubbing culture in parts of like you know places like berlin is so vibrant and other places in central europe because the entry tickets are so cheap and the nights out are so cheap too you're not spending on average 100 pound every time you walk into a club i guess in the, in london specifically if you go into a nightclub not including your drugs not including anything else you might take in there you might end up spending 100 pounds from your ticket to your drinks to the cloakroom to maybe an uber back you're already spending 100 pounds just going into that place so is it really is it really um, realistic to expect somebody 
to just you know trust that this place programming is going to be good and that they're going to have a good time um despite them not knowing who's playing on the lineup i don't really know but i would like to see more places take more chances um because i do think it's necessary i think if we don't start now when are we ever going to start and if this is the perfect time basically because you're limited as to who you can bring in um in terms of overseas acts especially with us you know being in brexit and whatnot um, or you know with Boris getting Brexit done as he likes to say so if that's the case why not use the opportunity to promote more people that are local and get them to basically go through the stages of being able to play you know for crowds that are very receptive to the kind of music because as great as it was for me the approach that I did where I purposely decided to kind of pull back from going to like sceny trendy places and to go and play and I then decided to go and play in bars and pubs around London basically taking my MIDI controller and plugging it into a PA system or something bringing my own PA system to go and um, use in there <laughs> unfortunately in order to get better at playing the music that I want to play after playing crowds I want to hear it <clears throat> much like you know being a stand-up comedian there is no way to learn that stuff at home you can't learn it on a computer you have to do it in real time and even even though i wasn't playing the stuff that i would have liked to have played at these bars and pubs i can still see i can still you know there, it was clear to see that there was a improvement in my ability to put together a set that was cohesive and that had a sort of you know groove to it that had a sort of theme to it that made sense that was a little bit of my personality with a little bit of what I thought the crowd would like you could see it in the set that I was playing but again I only got better because I was in front of people so it's a weird one it's a weird one it's a hard one I think we've done some good I would like to see more from clubs but I did um but it's nice to see kind of devious one sort of uh share that sentiment and say aloud maybe somebody of his stature saying something like that saying hey as great as it is to book me I still want to see local DJs play as a good thing i always use this example all the time of why i kind of it was a bit of a mind what's got a, a bit of a res, res, realization for me of why resident djs were so important was when i went to nicaragua in like 27 or 2007 or something like that right I forgot what it was 2007 i don't know whatever year that was went to nicaragua to go visit my friend and i remember going to leon the one of the main cities there and to go and party and hang out and whatnot and it's got a really vibrant clubbing scene there right there's loads of clubs like along the beach front they can go to obviously it's a little bit full of an expat town and loads of backpackers and whatnot but there's still a lot of you know native nicaraguans that live there and i was going out in the night and i was really looking forward to it because for whatever reason my head i really wanted to kind of hear what local nicaraguan kids listen to what do they get down to what's the vibe here and I go into the club and they were legitimately playing like a billboard top 100 list of tunes. And I thought it was just one place. I went to another place, same thing, another place, same thing, same thing. Until I went to like a kind of bar karaoke place. That's the only time I heard legitimately music with like Spanish lyrics. Everything was just hip hop and rap or trap music or whatever was trendy at that time. And it was really disheartening because it was like clearly the people that were playing there were playing to the foreigners or playing to the tourists that were coming there. Um, and then clearly the people that were also playing weren't actually regular, you know, locals. They were just people that were basically playing to the people that they think would want to hear that sort of stuff. So you didn't really get a, uh, any sense of what the local music scene was like at all. And that's a similar sort of thing that happens here in the UK. You don't really get a sense of regionally what people are actually listening to because everyone plays the same stuff. Or if you do go to some places, it's all the same big ticket DJs that you see playing all the other major markets. So you know crap bad example but i'm pretty sure if you saw an immediate lens set in flipping antwerp it's going to be exactly the same set if you saw her in flipping dublin do you know what i mean it's going to be not that different whereas what you'd actually want to do is go dublin and go to like a random club and actually hear what the kids in that scene there like to listen to whether it's flipping disco music sped up really fast or you know um, electronic body music whatever something you want to hear something different or something specific to the area where you're in but you know Maybe I'm looking too deeply into it, but yeah, good little interview there, courtesy of um, Warp Magazine. It's a CSR Presents, uh, an interview with Devious One. That's what it means in Spanish, isn't it? Entrevista, right? Entrevista con Devious One, el lado artístico del techno. I think that's what it means. Anyway, let's continue.